As we near completion of painting Dave, our party's fighter dwarf, we've got just a couple things to do. Details on the shield, that loincloth and boots, and finish the blade of the sword. So we'll start in with the sword. And because this is just for tabletop, I'm going to use a just a tricolor palette, starting with a dark gray. Lay that down fairly heavy. This is a base color, so it doesn't need to be too transparent. So nice and opaque. And I had considered changing this out a few times. The player has selected using a great axe rather than the long sword, but I'm going to keep the long sword at as is and tie in the hilt to the overall theme of the miniature. So just putting in a nice even thin coat of dark gray. Then we'll highlight from there. Generally I do four colors on commission and display minis so that the darks can be very very dark almost black up to white but because this is for tabletop a tertiary palette is going to be fine and just let that dry so Dave even though he is not using a long sword and has switched to a great axe that he recently had enchanted is definitely the heavy hitter for the party the player uses the actions very well in combat kind of picking and choosing when to do action surges and really deal out some damage to any of the encounters that require combat so definitely using that fighter archetype to the party's advantage Dave as the kind of melee fighter is always on the front line and diving into the combat always ready to take on the toughest opponents get up close and personal and deal out that damage and I thought about doing an effect and having some OSL lighting from this sword shining off the helmet and the bit of chainmail and pauldrons on that right hand side of the miniature but decided I would just keep it more like a iron sword or a steel sword so from the gray we started blending in some blues and there are actually two colors of blues that we're using one is a deeper almost true blue which you can start to see on my thumb standing out from that gray into a lighter blue before we start blending in the whites and we've sped it up just so you don't have to watch the paint at regular speed as I'm applying the paints I'm doing just about one half of the previous base layer so the first blue color was about three quarters but now moving down into halves and that's just for a stronger progression into the highlight tones by shrinking down the amount that you're painting it really gives that bright highlight a chance to really stand out as the point of light that's moving against the non-metallic metal and this format of highlighting for metals is called non-metallic metal. It's a great process to paint metal. And I prefer it over metallics just because I have a harder time really giving depth with shading and highlighting on metallic paints. So non-metallic metal is my preference. And you can see the sword really looking more like blued steel here which is why I use the blues and grays in the palette rather than blacks and grays I didn't want it to look heavy and iron but more like a worked steel 
so it'll have a strong blue tint which is going to stand out from the grayed armor and really give a pop of color and into final highlights on the sword here the highest point and the lowest point are going to get this is almost pure white and that just gives the highlight point as well as the reflected light from below and by having them on opposite ends it really matches out with what you would expect having that highlight right directly above the helmet of the miniature and that's how we'll play in when we start doing the final details which I've been teasing for quite some time but there's the sword you can see the progression of color and I think it's pretty good now we're going to move into the final details so this is where I'm tying the player into the mini so the player is actually a professional photographer and because the miniature is sculpted with a few of these round decorations I really wanted to make these look almost like camera lenses that was my inspiration and there again just a kind of call out to the player as a thank you for joining the campaign and playing an interesting and fun character and taking the time out of their busy schedule to play so highlighting the fact that the player is a photographer I really wanted to embed in the mini and this sculpt worked great for it starting out just with black and trying to be very careful to follow the sculpts on the mini I'm going to pop those on the sword as well just to tie back into the miniature make it one holistic sculpt so the loin cloth the decorative loin cloth the shield and the sword will all have these little highlights that will try to make look like camera lenses and I think the player will be tickled with that you can see that's just the black and stands out quite a bit on that tan leather for the loin not as much on the shield and sword until we start highlighting utilizing blues to kind of represent the sky and not really have it look too much like onyx just start putting a lower highlight point on each of those black areas this kind of is going to make them look jeweled like light is passing through it and collected at the bottom this is also the best way to paint gems and jewels on your miniatures just have to be mindful of the highlight colors that you use and here again I'm just using a tertiary of colors so blues very similar to what I did on the sword to tie that sword back into these highlight points and make it feel like one set mini and just trying to be very careful I've got my finest point brush that I'm using so I can really control where the paint is laying down and I know it's a little difficult to see but we'll zoom in after a little bit and while the character of Dave the Dwarf obviously is not a photographer in our Dungeons and Dragons campaign there is a little bit of history of mining some gems out of a freshly started dwarven mine so even though these represent camera lenses they could easily be gems that he incorporated from one of their very early adventures finding ways to tie in the character and the player into the miniature I really enjoy painting this type of detail I really enjoy and I always hope that my players can recognize these little details 
without me having to really call them out. You can see the progression into the lighter blues just continues smaller and smaller areas, just hints of color because we don't want them to overwhelm. We want these really to look like black lenses or black jewels. So just very light amounts of color. And one of the challenges as we get into these smaller and smaller bits is just real good brush control. So making sure that we don't have the tip of the brush dry out too much and that we don't load too much paint into the belly of the brush. So lots of control and really watching the amount. Now here we're just putting on a speck of highlight color. So this is really to give the highest point its brightest light. And that's what really makes these look gem-like. And this is the final touch for any type of jewels or gems that you're painting is just this little pop of pure white at the very highest point where the light directly hits. So here we have Dave the Dwarf now completely painted and we just have to seal it and then complete the base. But Dave the Dwarf with callouts to the character as well as the player. I sure hope he enjoys the miniature and whether he uses this on our tabletop or just as a display piece. I'm definitely happy to be able to present it to him when the time comes. Next we're going to start painting Dell, our cleric. Join us. Thanks for watching our video. We hope you enjoyed it. Hope it was enlightening and informative. Here's another video we think you may enjoy. Make sure you hit the subscribe button to help us grow. Remember we launch new videos every week to try to help you answer the question of where will your adventures take you?